Hey everyone, Brian here from Native Instruments. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up the Complete Control S-Series Mark II with Cubase. I'll also show you basic functionality to get you up and running as quickly as possible, so let's get started. Using a USB cable, connect one end into the back of the keyboard and the other end into your computer. If you are using the S88 Mark II, you will also need to connect the included power supply. The next step is to turn on the keyboard by pressing the power button on the back of the hardware. Now that the keyboard is connected to your computer and powered on, you can now open Cubase. Navigate to your Applications folder by going to Go at the top and select Applications. Find Cubase in your Applications list and double-click to open. You can click on More, click Empty to load an empty project, and then click Create, and then click Open. Now we need to configure the MIDI preferences in Cubase so that the advanced integration is set up correctly. Click on Studio at the top and select Studio Setup. I'll click the plus sign and select Complete Control S-Series. For MIDI input, make sure it's selected to Complete Control DAW-1 and for MIDI output, also Complete Control DAW-1. Now click on the MIDI port to set up the MIDI ports for the S-Series. Make sure the boxes below visible are checked for the S-Series port 1, port 2, and also Complete Control DAW-1. Also check the boxes for In, All MIDI for the same three. With the advanced integration set up, you can use the Complete Control S-Series to control various aspects of Cubase directly from the hardware. We'll first load up an instrument so we can hear some music, and I'll use hybrid keys from Complete 13 Select. I'll click the plus sign, select instrument, and then click the drop-down menu next to instrument below. Hybrid keys is a contact-based instrument, so I'll select contact and click add track. I'll find hybrid keys in contacts browser on the left, click on instruments, and double click on hybridkeys.nki to load the instrument. You have dedicated buttons for the most important and frequently used functions in Cubase. You can first turn on and off the metronome using the dedicated metronome button. You can also enable a count in by holding shift plus record so Cubase will play the metronome for four beats before the recording begins. To record something, just press the record button and when you're done, press stop. As you can hear, I didn't play the chords right on beat, so I can use the quantize button to lock my MIDI notes to the grid so my recording is on beat. If I ever need to undo or redo an action, I can press the undo button or hold shift plus undo to redo an action. Let's add in a bass line and use Monarch for that. I'll click the plus sign again and click the instrument drop down. Monarch is a reactor based instrument, so I'll select Reactor 6 and click Add Track. I just want to play an instrument rather than build one, so I'll select Play. I'll find Monarch in Reactor's browser on the left and double click Monarch.ens. On the right side of the keyboard, you have a four-directional encoder, which lets you rotate, click up, down, left, or right, and push in to select. I can quickly switch between my different channels using the encoder. I'm currently on my Monarch track, and you can hear this preset when I play my keys. Clicking up on the encoder now switches to my first channel, and now I can play this instrument.
Let's switch back to Monarch and record in the bass line. Now that I have two parts recorded, I want to balance the volume levels of them. I can press the mixer button, and now the displays show me my channels in Cubase. Using the knobs below, I can increase or decrease the volume of each part. Holding shift and turning the knobs allows for finer adjustment. I have mute and solo buttons as well that let me mute or solo different channels by holding the mute or solo button and pressing the rectangular button above each channel. If you have a project that has more than eight channels, you can use the left or right arrows to access the other channels. You can also adjust the pan settings for each channel by holding shift and clicking up on the encoder. The same knobs below each channel adjust the pan settings. For a complete S-Series and Cubase integration overview, click the link in the description to view the integration cheat sheet. In addition to being able to control Cubase, if you are using the Complete Control plugin to load your instrument, there is a lot more functionality from the keyboard, so let's take a look. In order to access the other features of the keyboard, you will need to load up the plugin Complete Control. Complete Control allows you to easily browse, tweak, and preview all of your sounds and much more. If you are just loading Contact or Reactor, you still have the advanced DAW integration, but you won't be able to smartly browse or tweak your instruments from the hardware. Whenever I want to use a new instrument, I always load up Complete Control first. I'll click on the plus sign again, click the Instrument dropdown, and select Complete Control. If you don't see Complete Control in your plugins list, make sure that you installed it using Native Access. Once Complete Control loads, you'll see the display on the keyboard has changed asking me to press Browser. On the hardware, I will press the Browser button, and now I can search through all of my Complete Control supported plugins. Using the knobs at the bottom, I can first scroll through all of my instruments. All of the NI instruments are supported in Complete Control and also hundreds of plugins from different companies. Their products show up on the display just like an NI instrument, giving you a seamless browsing experience. Let's scroll down using knob 2 and select Ethereal Earth, which is part of Complete 13 Select. Once it's selected on the left, I can use the knobs on the right to filter my presets list to find a sound quickly. The knobs are touch capacitive, so when I touch the knob, the filtering pops up on the right display. Filtering refines your presets list, letting you find the sound that you're looking for quickly. I'll select Synth Lead and Classic Poly, and the presets list results are now smaller. As I scroll through the presets, you hear audio previews for every preset, NI and NKS instruments, so I know what the preset sounds like without actually having to load the instrument. I'll click load at the top, and now I can start playing the instrument. Every instrument that's supported in Complete Control has all of the instrument parameters mapped to the eight knobs below the display, giving you direct control of your instrument from the keyboard. Many instruments have more than eight parameters, so I can use the left and right arrows to switch between the different banks. Back on the left side of the keyboard, I have an auto button. This lets me enable automation recording so I can tweak the knobs and have those changes be recorded into Cubase. If I want to change a preset, I can go back to browser, or I can use the preset up or down buttons on the hardware.
You can also load effects from the hardware and create an effects chain. I'll press the button at the top and go to the next slot and then press browser. What you're seeing on the display are all of my effects. In addition to the NI effects, there are also NKS effects such as waves or isotope. Just like instruments, I can filter for a type of effect that I'm looking for, like a distortion effect or something creative. Once it's loaded, I can use the eight knobs to customize the effect and use the left or right arrows to navigate through the banks of parameters. When running your instruments through Complete Control, you also have access to the Smart Play features such as Scales Mode or Chords Mode. Scale Mode allows you to choose different scales so you can never play a wrong note on the keyboard, and it's also a great learning tool. Pressing the Scale button enables Scale Mode, and holding Shift and pressing the Scale button allows you to edit the scale. The knobs at the bottom let you choose between a wide range of scale banks, and the second knob lets you choose different scales. No matter what notes I play on the keyboard, I will always be playing in key. I can change the root note, and also change how the scale mode works. I can set it to guide mode, which just visually shows me the notes in the scale using the light guide, but still allows me to play notes not in the scale. Mapped mode shows me the notes of the scale, and if I play the wrong note, Complete Control automatically corrects it to the correct key. Easy mode changes the scale to all white keys, making it easy to play in key. Chords mode lets me choose different chords and play them with a single note. I have Harmonizer mode selected, which builds chords like major, minor, or sevenths, or I can choose chord sets, which are pre-made chord progressions. I can jump around the keys and come up with a cool chord progression. You can combine scale mode and chord harmonizer together so the chords you play are still in key. Another smart play feature is Art Mode, or Arpeggiator. Just like the Scale Mode, pressing the Art button enables Art Mode, and holding Shift plus Arp lets you edit the Arpeggiator settings. Using the knobs below, you can adjust how the notes are played back and the rate of the Arpeggiator. A cool feature are the buttons on the top right. These are different Arpeggiator slots that you can set. Select one of the slots, and select a rate using knob 3. Select another slot and change the rate using knob 3 again. Now I can quickly switch between different arpeggiator rates and even record these switches as automation. In addition to the light guide helping you with different scales, the light guide will also show you different info depending on what instrument you have loaded. I'll go back to my browser and load up a new instrument. I'm going to select West Africa. Once I load West Africa, the different colors represent different drum hits and different patterns that I can trigger. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the Complete Control S series is capable of. For more clarification on anything about the keyboard, all information about the keyboard is located in the manual, which can be found via the link in the description. Thanks for watching.